Someone thought that I was making a victim of Satan, and perhaps this person was correct in my show earlier about Satan, God, who is it, who's doing what? Satan is doing the things that God intends for him to do, and therefore, said an objector of mine via email, I am making Satan a victim. And the objector went a step further, and I don't blame these questions at all. I don't blame these concerns. I don't blame the person for them because these are reasonable when you accept the premise that all creation can only do that which God has it do. Um, then if you're making Satan a victim, then everyone in the Bible is a victim. Everyone's a victim, whatever they do. And in fact, we can take it even a step further. I'll take over from here. Um, we today, all of us in the world are victims. If you want to look at it that way of God's plan. Hello, everyone. Martin Zender. I already said that. But see, that's you can only think that if you think that God is this <laughs> type of um, villain who has this plan and he's screwing us all down here and we're all getting the shaft. God gets the gold mine. We get the shaft. You can only think that way. You can only have this victim mentality if you think that you're getting screwed. But even those who seem to be getting screwed, let's start with Satan and then we'll get to you. Um, even then, Satan is going to be reconciled to God. Well, one of the false premises this objector had in mind was that Satan was going to go to hell for eternity. And in that case, if Satan was created a, an opposer of God, an antagonist, and if Satan goes to hell for eternity, then God is unjust because Satan had no say in the matter. Satan is truly a victim then Satan is truly a victim then and only then. But if Satan is reconciled to God, do I have to prove this again to you? Satan is eventually reconciled to God. Has to be because, yeah. You know, I'm tired of playing the defensive on this and I recommend this to you. Take the offensive. People say, I hear that. People say to you, I hear you guys believe that you believe Satan's going to actually be saved. Instead of getting all defensive, say, look at them like they're nuts, which they are, and give them this kind of face like, uh, yeah, watch me, uh, yeah, Satan's going to be reconciled to God, like, wh what do you think? He's going to be eternally tormented? Shh, you must be in a cult. And you have to be in a cult to think that Satan is going to be eternally tormented because of Colossians chapter 1. This verse, this passage has been in the Bible for a long time. I'm showing you, this looks like the originals here, but it's not. In my scriptures, Colossians chapter 1 on the studio cam. Look carefully. Look carefully. Now I'm going to explain this to you. Because all things were created by God. This is a preliminary to this topic of are we victims or are we beneficiaries? That's another good title. Maybe I'll use it. Or maybe I'll just... I don't know how, what I'm going to do yet, but we can feel both. We can feel both ways. We can feel like God is really screwing me, uh, and Satan surely has the right to say that. Uh, if we in the body of Christ say it, then we're truly missing the point because we're in the body of Christ and we've won the ultimate lottery. But we can still feel like we're being pushed around. We're being pushed around by God. I'm not making fun of anybody because I feel that way too. In fact, just. Was it this morning? Oh, God, I hope it wasn't this morning. Yeah, it was this morning. Just this morning, I complained to God. And I said, when is this going to stop? I won't tell you specifically what I was referencing. God knew. And um, I get impatient, and I feel like I'm getting squashed like a bug. And, and so... Um, we can see ourselves as victims, and in some sense we are. Oh, I'm going to show you a passage from Romans. When you have a pass for every bad thing that you do, Paul gives you the ultimate buck passing technique in Romans, no, chapter, what did I say, 9, chapter 7. I'll get into that with you, maybe not until uh, tomorrow. So anyway, keeping in mind Satan's career, 
What an illustrious career. Not really. It's an ignoble career. And yet Satan himself is not being screwed because Satan himself will be reconciled to God and there will be a day when he will be overjoyed to be delivered from his role as adversary. Boy, talk about a contrast. So here we are in Colossians chapter 1, which I just showed you physically in my scriptures, my copy of the Concordant Literal New Testament. We talk about Christ in verse 15, who's the image of of the invisible God, firstborn of every creature. Christ is the firstborn of every creature. Here's a list of the creatures, including the, these creatures. For in him is all created, not just creatures, but all is created in him. And here it is, that in the heavens and that on the earth. There's nothing but heaven and earth. Next, all is created in him the invisible and the visible. What else is there besides visible and invisible? Whether thrones or lordships or sovereignties or authorities, all is created through him, for him, and he's before all, all has its, its cohesion in him. What I'm doing here is I'm taking away one of the premises of my objector's argument that Satan is getting screwed. Satan is truly a victim because he's going to end up squashed like a bug for eternity, or no worse, tormented in the lake of fire forever and ever. But the same all that is created in Christ in verse 20 through the cross, this is Christ as the firstborn of every creature. Now he's the firstborn from among the dead in verse 18. Same context. That in all he may be becoming first for in him the entire complement that is of God delights to dwell and through him to reconcile all to him making peace through the blood of his cross. What things? whether those on the earth or those in the heavens. So the very same, whether those in the earth or, or those on the earth or those in the heavens that he created are the very same, whether those on the earth or those in the heaven that he is going to reconcile to himself. So this is good news for Satan. So Satan is a victim, yes, and a victim, no. Is Satan a victim? Here would be my answer at a conference. We open up the floor to questions. Somebody asked me, is Satan a victim? Yes and no, I say. He's a victim, yes, in that he has no choice in what he is. No choice in what God has made him. No choice. He's a sinner from the beginning. A man killer from the beginning. John 8, 44. God created the waster to destroy. Maybe Psalm 16, 4, Proverbs 16, 4. Read the whole Old Testament, you'll find it. In another sense, I'm when I'm looking at the intermediate phases, the relative viewpoint, as I famously call it, then uh, Satan is not a victim. He's to blame for this. He's to blame. He's to blame. We're going to place blame while we're looking at things in the er relative earthly perspective. It's not my fault. It was Satan's fault. Satan's fault. The devil made me do it. Paul says this in Romans 7. Going to get to that probably tomorrow. So in one sense, uh, yeah, Satan is a victim. Okay, let's look at the Bible. But in another sense, no, I'm going to blame him for all the crap that happens. But of course, I know God's doing it. So, oh, here's a great thing then. Is God a victim uh, of my criticism? Uh, you can't even consider that. God's the top of the food chain. So the buck stops at God's desk. That's what we're talking about, the absolute viewpoint. So God's doing all this. God has very broad shoulders. He can take the hits. Everything he does is good. Everything that pours out of him is good and righteous and has a purpose. We just don't always see it. We just don't always see it. And along that line, this anecdote I'm going to share with you will be helpful. I was talking to a friend of mine this morning who's having a real trial right now. Her father is abusing her mother, physically abusing her mother. Now, she's grown up. She doesn't live in the home, but she knows that this is going on. Her mother has called her, and it vexes her. And because of that, she says, I hate my father. Ooh, that's strong language. But, you know, I empathized with her. I said, you know what? I hate Joel Osteen. So, you know, uh, God hated Esau relative to his love of Jacob. Ta wrote about this in Romans chapter 9 in the ZWTF. I don't absolutely hate Joel Osteen. I strongly dislike him, but I love him in the broader sense, just like God does. I'm very godlike in this, that I can love and hate simultaneously depending on the viewpoint. If you want to take the absolute viewpoint, which I do at this time, I'm going to say I love Joel Osteen because Christ died even for him. I know. 
crazy. Uh, but I dislike him strongly, which is a definition of hate. That's all it is. Hate's just a little, it has a bad reputation. So I'm just going to say strongly dislike. Uh, strongly dislike Joel Osteen because he's an opposer of the truth. And I strongly dislike people who oppose the truth. So I empathized with my friend concerning her father and the situation there. And I said, but I'm, and I challenged, but at this time, at this point, I challenged her. I said, I don't know if you're ready for this. And she wasn't, but I didn't know that till I laid out the challenge. And I said, I know your mother's the victim, but I want you to look at your father for a moment as the victim. Ooh, that didn't go over well. What do you mean my father's a victim? I said, look, he is the product of his upbringing. I'm thinking he had a bad father. I'm thinking that he saw a very bad example of how to treat a woman, of how to treat a wife. And I gave her my example. I mean, I could never hurt or abuse a woman. I can't. It's not in me. I had the perfect example of how to treat a woman, how to treat a wife from my father who treated my mother like a princess, like a queen, even though at times my mother didn't deserve that treatment. But of course, there's the grace of God. And my father wasn't even a believer. It, he just had this instinctive humanity. It was his humanity. It was the love of God operating in him by instinct. He had a conscience, a God-given conscience. And so I became like my father. And so I challenged my friend to say, look, he became like his father, who was probably an abusive father. And he saw his father abusing, abusing his mother. And so it goes down the line. This terrible thing goes down the line. And I said, but I believe deep, deep down under layers and layers. I said, your father is a good man and he loves you and he loves your your mother, but he has been laden with so many, um, so many trials, so many problems, so many things that came against him that this is what he's become. But underneath it, he's, he's a good man. Now I'm going to really go out on a limb here and say that I believe, uh, maybe I'll save this for tomorrow. I believe something about, about Satan. And then we could extrapolate that and say about everybody in the Bible and about us, even the worst among us. I believe something that I have no scripture for. It's just me. It's just me. Uh, but to, I'm going to save this for, for tomorrow. I want to investigate for a, a few days maybe this idea of victimhood, of God screwing us all. And we're looking at this totally from the relative perspective. We're looking at it as we're being abused. We're being abused by God. And um, in the relative sense, there is abuse going on. Who can deny that my friend's father is abusing his wife, her mother? It's terrible. I'm not going to deny what my, my, re my reality or her reality as reported to me by her. I'm not going to deny these things. I'm not going to deny that Satan is today an enemy. But of course, I always exhort us to raise our viewpoint and look at things from God's pers perspective. And I told my friend, God loves your father. Ooh, she didn't like to hear that because she hates her father and she, you know, it'd be nice if God hated him too. God, but God was on my side. Well, God on that level hates the man's behavior, but God loves the man. And deep down there, I say there's a decent human being. And I'll put this thought in your head. Think about this overnight. Is it possible that deep down in the adversary, there is a core of goodness? After all, this being was created by God. And even the worst human beings on earth, and I'm going to give you the exhibit A tomorrow of the worst human being on the earth was deep down a man with a conscience, even those whose consciences have been seared or spoiled or ruined or degraded or debased. They have to have one in order for it to be degraded and debased. Are you intrigued? I hope so. More on this tomorrow.